Hello everyone, Stephen here from Metal Essence and welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top 10 favorite Anique Minardo compositions. As many of you uh, who follow me on my channel know, Anique Minardo is absolutely one of my favorite perfumers. Um, I'm not going to get into too much detail in this video about her bio and where she comes from, but I will mention that uh, she started working with Firminish in 1991 um, and that she studied chemistry as an undergrad and uh, she is one of my favorite perfumers to date. I think her compositions are very challenging. I think they push the envelope. They really go beyond their boundaries. And I think she pushes the envelope just enough so that it's creative, but it's not so avant-garde that it's so challenging to the nose. Well, some of her compositions are. One of them might actually be in this list, but for the most part, I think Anique Minardo is a very versatile perfumer, and it is showcased by her large catalog of fragrances. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into the list. Um, I will talk about her in a future video, but for right now, let's get into my top 10 favorite Anique Minardo compositions to date. So we are going to start off with number 10. Number 10 is a fragrance that I have reviewed on my channel in the past. It is a very underrated fragrance in the fragrance community, but it happens to be a fragrance that I enjoy wearing every single time that I wear it. I don't get bored of it, and maybe that's because I don't wear it too often, but when I do, I absolutely love it. It's by Azaro, and it's called Visit for Men. This is a great spicy fragrance. If anybody is familiar with the house of Le Labo, this fragrance actually reminds me a lot of Santal 33. I pick some spices, some woodsy nuances, maybe even a, a great deal of sandalwood. I'm getting different things with it the more and more that I wear it. Very intriguing scent. Not very challenging, but it certainly works very, very well for an upscale scenario. That's number 10 on my list. Number nine on my list is a fragrance that I've never heard being talked about uh, in the fragrance community. This is definitely an underrated gem, and when you uh, hear the notes, you'll see just why this is as intriguing as I find it to be. This one is by Celine Dion, believe it or not, and it's just called Celine. This is a men's fragrance. Um, it's spicy. It also has a hazelnut note in there, so it comes across a little bit nutty. It's a great fragrance, very different, very unique, if I may say so myself. Um, like I said, it has that spicy nuance. For me, I get a rubbery note. Now, it's not similar to the rubber note that you would get in like Fahrenheit or Bulgari Black or something like that. It does remind me a little bit of myrrh, like a very bitter myrrh. Uh, but in this fragrance, it comes across a little bit rubbery. Once it settles down, though, that nutty hazelnut quality starts to come out with just a little pinch of sweetness. This is a really nice fragrance. My only qualm with it is that it's not a heavy hitter. I wish it performed a little bit more loudly. Um, but other than that, number nine, Celine for men. Number eight on my list is another fragrance that I gave high marks to and that I've reviewed on my channel. It's by D Squared, and this one is called Potion for Men. Uh, this one and Burberry London, a lot of people say, are the um, Christmas trees in a bottle. And yeah, you do get a lot of spices. You got some sweet resins in the background. Uh, you have cinnamon, a, a lot of cinnamon actually, and you have some balsamic qualities and characters to it. Great fragrance, perfect for uh, laying around the house, snuggling up in your bed, maybe around your fireplace with a good book or something like that. Beautiful fragrance, uh, number ten, nine, eight on my list. Number seven on my list is another popular fragrance, um, and it, it just shows the versatility that Anique Minardo has as a perfumer. This is by Hugo Boss, and this one is called Boss Bottle. It also goes by the name Boss Number Six. Now this is a really nice apple fragrance. It does have a leather quality in it, like a leather nuance. And uh, this leather quality doesn't come across too prominently. And it doesn't smell too natural either, but I'm quite glad that it doesn't because I think it would have been overbearing. This is a perfect refined upscale, like suit and tie kind of a fragrance, but could also work in casual scenarios as well. I personally know people who have worn it on a date. So uh, don't hesitate to wear this fragrance on a date either. I think it's very versatile. And then number six on my list is a fragrance that doesn't get nearly enough attention as it should, I think. A lot of people kind of brush it off to the wayside, and I don't feel as though it deserves that criticism. Yes, it does have a harsh opening, but I think for a designer fragrance, especially one released uh, recently with the influx of sport and noir and all these other flankers that many people would categorize as meaningless, I think this one is actually a very unique composition, really stands out. I don't think anything has preceded it in the designer branch of the fragrance industry that it could compare to the uniqueness of the composition. This one is by uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier, 
and it's called Cocorico. Here you have the double entendre of the male profile, kind of resembles the Lamal bottles. Beautiful fragrance. You get this mix of cocoa, uh, what else is in there? Fig leaf, and it opens up with this clashing uh, of the two notes. Um, but you do get this powdery quality, kind of like a cocoa powder, and then you do get some vanillic nuances that start to come out. Beautiful fragrance. Um, I actually like it. One of my favorite Anique Minardo fragrances, as you can tell, number six on this list. Number five on my list used to be my signature scent back in like 2008, 2009, around the time when I first got this fragrance. And uh, I used to wear this religiously, ran through a few bottles. This is a beautiful coffee lemon scent. This is a collaboration uh, that she did. This one is Armani Attitude by Giorgio Armani. Great fragrance, kind of has this Zippo lighter feel to it clicks back into place really really nice performance right uh, nice yeah nice performance actually I do get good performance from this fragrance um, this is for me a very sophisticated upscale fragrance I would actually be more inclined to wear that one um, perhaps uh, semi formally formally I would definitely feel comfortable wearing it to work just don't over apply um, it's one of those fragrances that could I guess classify you as that cologne guy if you wear too much of it but love the fragrance very sophisticated number five on my list. Number four on my list is the first niche fragrance on this list and uh, this is a very challenging fragrance. This is one that I was talking about in the beginning of the video. Uh, this fragrance is not going to be loved by many, um, at least not in the opening because it does come across rather smoky. It's from the house of Le Labo. To my knowledge, this is one of the only two fragrances she's made for Le Labo, the other one being Gaillac 10. But the one on my list is Patchouli 24. Um, the four listed notes for this fragrance are patchouli, vanilla, benzoin, styrax benzoin, and birch tar. So of course this birch tar note comes across very smoky in the opening, um, almost relentless. You know, a lot of people say it smells like A1 steak sauce or barbecue sauce or it, like barbecue itself. Um, I kind of get that in the opening, but it has this sweetness to it and come on, who doesn't like the smell of barbecue, right? When your neighbors are out there cooking, you just want to visit. Um, no, but honestly, I think it smells really nice. It's just that a lot of people might not want to smell like it. So um, I have a lot of respect for it, but I can definitely see why some people would be a little turned off by it or wouldn't be inclined towards it. Number four on my list, Patchouli 24. Number three on my list is one of the fragrances that I love reaching to whenever I have a sweet tooth. Um, again, this was also my signature scent, I want to say back in 2011. 2012, something like that. I wore this one religiously. It's by Lolita Limpica. This one is called Al Masculin. This one actually smells very similar to another composition by Nick Minardo, and I guess, you know, it makes sense that she happens to be the perfumer for both. It smells very similar to Body Kuros. Only difference being this one has a heavy e emphasis on licorice and star anise, whereas Body Kuros also has that spicy sweetness, but it has a lot of eucalyptus. So this is a very youthful, very playful um, fragrance, but what I like about it is that it doesn't have that juvenile sweetness that you get in like cotton candy and sugar and yeah, I mean this one has a sophisticated type of a sweetness to it, even though it is very sweet. Um, it can almost be cloyingly sweet to some people's uh, senses, so make sure you try this one before you buy it. Do not blind buy it. Uh, number two on my list, um, of course, my second favorite, Anique Minardo fragrance. Um, this one is probably one of her most unique fragrances, very avant-garde. Um, of course, like its predecessor, Dior's Fahrenheit, it kind of fits within that same genre or that same realm of scents, if you will. This one is by Bulgari and uh, it's called Bulgari Black. So here it is, the hockey puck of the fragrance industry. Super unique fragrance. It does have as the uh, texture and the, um, I guess, material of the bottle would suggest. It's made out of rubber. Um, it does have a rubbery smell to it, but I think that rubbery note, a lot of people uh, translate it to leather, and it has this leathery quality to it, and of course leather connotes, you know, expensive materials and expensive ways. You know, if you were to smell someone, uh, you know, wearing a, a new leather coat or new leather boots, you know, you catch that whiff of it, and this kind of evokes that very, very well. So, um, that's number two on my list. Absolutely love Anique Minardo's compositions. I do have a few honorable mentions for you, so let's go ahead and get started. First honorable mention from the house of Boucheron is called Jaiperon. Uh, this one is powdery, it's vanillic, it's resinous. It does have a mature quality, though. 
which is the reason why I don't reach for this too much, but honestly, I do absolutely love this fragrance. Um, I just don't wear it too often because, again, I don't want people thinking that I smell you know, uh, you know, older than I actually am, but it, it is very unique and it stands out from my collection. For some reason, it reminds me a lot of Guerlain Shalimar every time I wear it. I don't know why, but it just does. The next honorable mention is Style and Play or Lacoste Red. Uh, this one actually reminds me a lot of Boss Bottled and I like Boss Bottled way more. So that's why I have been wearing Boss Bottled a lot. I don't wear this one too much, but again, really nice apple scent. Um, opens up very, uh, very uh, fresh, and it, I think it's youthful and it's sporty without smelling like a sport fragrance. And the last honorable mention is Body Cool Rose by Yves Saint Laurent. Great fragrance. Ladies love this fragrance, but as far as it caters to my personal taste, my favorite is Al Masculin, and I wear Al Masculin every time I try to decide between one of these two, and that is the only reason why it didn't make it to my list. Um, but it is an honorable mention. Absolutely love it. So the number one fragrance on my list by Anique Minardo. I think this is a heavenly fragrance. It actually smells like heaven. That should be the tagline of this fragrance. This is what you wear if you want to smell like heaven. This one is a Privé from the House of Dior. And this one is called Bois d'Argent. So, um, absolutely beautiful composition from the house of Christian Dior. It has this iris quality to it. Iris comes across very smooth, very delicate, but again, very neutral in its gender appeal, if you will. Very wearable. A lot of people say it has a cloudy presence. Um, it has a lot of really, really great things going for it. It has the sweetness in the background. It has some myrrh in it, which comes across smelling resinous, but also brings forth a little bit of sweetness. You have some cypress and woods in the background, which bring forth a very subtle masculine quality. But overall, this fragrance, I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. Really sample this one. I would highly encourage you go out there and you get a sample of it. It happens to be one of my favorite fragrances. I would even go as far as saying it's the closest that I have come to a signature scent. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. These have been my top 10 Anique Minardo compositions. If you own or have tried any of these fragrances, please let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to rate and subscribe for future videos and frequent giveaways. Again, thank you very much for watching. This has been Stephen with another video from Adolescence. See you soon.